Hi, it's Richard from Original Outdoors. This is a video in our short tutorial series about the basics of axe craft. So we've already had this video where I chop down a tree, this video where I take the branches off in a process called snedding or limbing, this video where I cross cut it with an axe, also called bucking in some far flung colonial places. And then we've got this video where I'm gonna show you some, some really simple tips on shaping the wood that you've extracted from the forest by felling it, taking the branches off, and then cutting it to the length you want. So I've got this. This is the very upper section of that tree that I felled in the first video, this bit. So I've cut it off and I've actually cut it off with a saw there because, well, it was quicker and easier and it was starting to rain. So I've now got this piece of timber here that I want to put a point on. And it's kind of, it's already got a half decent point on it there, which is the remnant of the ax blow that I used in the limbing snedding video to take the unusable brash off the top of the tree. And there, you've ended up with a nice usable piece of timber. But I don't like this little hook branch bit here. This is going to slow it down if I was trying to drive it into the ground as a stake. So I'm going to make another point back here. So I'm going to show you how to do that with this axe. I've got a slightly shorter, I think it's a Helco Black Forest axe or something like that. Basically it's a trekking axe with a slightly broader head, but it's perfect for the job. So I've got that and I've got a stump here to use as a cutting block. I could just do this on the floor. I could do it on a wide round horizontal log and use that as a chopping block, but this will do absolutely fine. I want to make a point about here. So I need to shit, that point is already in there. I need to remove the wood that isn't that point. And I need to be mindful as always of safety and where this ax is going to end up if I swing and I miss. So I can't stand here like that and swing because if I miss, it's gonna drive it right into my thigh. So I have to stand off to one side, but that means I have to lean in a bit. And working with an ax is always gonna be slightly awkward because the comfortable way of doing it is often the most dangerous way. So using the weight of the post to keep it wedged against a little, little ridge in the uh, wood on the chopping block there. I'm gonna swing in with a series of diagonal cuts in the same place there. It's gonna be awkward until I can get this to rest on the stump. Now I could keep going, but what's likely to happen is that split is gonna carry on down there. I'll end up with a ragged piece of wood. So what I'll do is turn it completely 180 degrees and cut from that side. I could actually just bend this and snap it now, but I want a nice symmetrical point on four sides. So I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees and then finish off like that. I can now snap that off. And I've got a half decent point. It's good enough to drive into the ground, but I could make it better. So next, I can either do this standing and lean in or drop to one knee and fine tune it like that. So this position is still safe because if I miss, it's either gonna hit the block or it's gonna come over here. I have to lean out to one side slightly to do it, but it's still safe. You don't have to do the freelance freestyle leg thing after the side like that. That's just how I'm choosing to do it. It's how I ended up leaning as well. A bit of fine tuning. There we go. A usable point on the piece of wood that I can drive into the ground. 
there we go. That's the basics of making a point on a piece of wood with an axe. It's dead simple, but after you've done 20 or 30, you really start to notice it. So you've got to take your time, take your care, and not put too much force into it. Have a sharp axe, have a very sharp axe. So just nice smooth chips like that come off and not chunks and the axe doesn't keep getting buried in the piece of wood. You want to slice through it and just take them off in nice even chunks, but that's what you should end up with. So, so next, let's have a look at splitting a piece of wood down into two sections. I hate doing that with hemlock because it's all knotty and doesn't split well, so, Let's go to my meadow. I just said we were going to be in a meadow and I meant that meadow over there which is full of wildflowers and has a lovely mountain backdrop and it would be a great place to film this next scene except it's turned out to be bloody windy once we've come out of the woods so we're here instead because there's a shelter of a hedge and we're in this green woodworking log store area I have here at the edge of the farm and I want to talk about splitting wood not splitting wood for firewood but splitting long logs like this into two or more pieces so you can get a more usable piece of timber out of them. So before I show you the technique for splitting this piece of ash, which you may have noticed is not a piece of western hemlock spruce, it's a completely different species, but this is a much easier wood to split and it's a better demonstration, I want to talk about axes again. But I want to talk about this area of the axe particularly, the eye of the axe. So when you look, think about an axe head and all the metal there, you have a harder piece of metal here, which is actually fused to a softer piece of metal here. Axes aren't made in one piece, they're kind of two pieces forged together. And then you have this area here, which is where the softer metal is, but it's also where you have two thin walls of metal either side of the axe eye where the shaft goes through. So this piece of wood here is this piece of wood here. It goes all the way through. The metal either side of here is very, very thin. It's not very thick at all. And any force that you put on this axe when you swing goes through the shaft here and through the main part of the axe. If you put this axe on a piece of wood and beat on the back of it with a heavier metal object, like a hammer or a mallet or something like that, then what you're going to do is not put force on there. You're going to put force through these thin pieces of metal either side of the shaft and they are likely to deform and get squished. And you'll either crack it or you'll bend those pieces of metal around, you'll crush the wood in the shaft there and you'll ruin the ax. So in a moment, you're gonna see me beating on the back of this ax with a hammer looking object, something that looks like that or the really primeval one that looks like that. But the reason I'm doing that is because this is, although it's a piece of hard wood, it's softer than metal. So this deforms, as you can see by all these dents here, this deforms around the head of the axe. The axe head doesn't deform. So any shock is taken up in that, not in the axe head. So you can beat on the back of an axe with something like that. You still need to take care, but you, you're less likely to damage the axe using a piece of wood like that than you are if you use a metal mallet or a hammer. Right. Next, I need to decide where I'm going to cut this piece of wood. Looking at the end of the log, you can see you've got the rings of the wood and pretty much every piece of wood you cut into, you're going to find that these rings aren't symmetrical. They're not like they are in drawings where you have one central ring and then everything goes out from that in even rings. It's often going to be one to one side or the other. That's because the tree was either leaning towards the light and leaning towards the south or it was growing out in a curve like that because there's a slope and it wanted to sort of maintain its center of gravity so it grew in a bit of a curve like that and put more wood out on one side than the other 
you generally find some asymmetry in a round tree like this. So this one isn't even round, it's actually kind of oval, pear-shaped. So it's going to be an interesting one to split. I need to decide what I want to use this piece of wood for and where I want it to split. Now you don't always get to split the wood in exactly the way you want it to. Sometimes it's just going to go in a certain way because there are already natural stresses in the wood and that can vary by species, by age, by moisture content and just from one end of a tree to another. Um, so you can't guarantee that you're going to get the exact shape you want out of it. But you can do your very best to at least steer it towards your desired outcome. So I'm going to try and split it hmm, that way. I'm going to try and put a line through the center there. What I expect is going to happen is it's going to peel off towards one direction. But we'll see what we can do. Right, that's time to get the axe out. So I've got it all set up here, ready for splitting. The first few centimeters of that split where the fibers start to come apart is really important, it's really crucial because that dictates really where the rest of the split is going to be. So you want to make sure that you keep the ax straight and you keep the line through the center of the ax blade like that in line with where you want the ax to split through the wood, where you want the wood to split apart. So you can set it there and get it exactly where you want it to be. My log here is wedged between these two posts to keep it upright. And now I'm ready to start beating on it with my wooden mallet beetle thing. I started to make my first split and as expected it's run off to one side. I think there's some tension inherent in the wood here just from where it was growing. But along the top it's actually it's doing what I hoped, it's running mostly down the central spine. So I think I'm going to get at least one good half of timber out of this. And I could just keep beating on this axe until the head is driven further into the wood and on something this long it might split apart there exactly where I want it to but in a longer piece of wood or something with a bit more tension holding it together it's quite possible to bury an axe head in there and just have it lock up and not split apart at all so you need to give it a helping hand and you need to get some wedges so you can buy some and you can take them with you and these are steel wedges that's a dog these are steel wedges that you would use for tree surgery or for felling or something like that and they're very good uh, you can beat on them all day but they're also very heavy so i'm not carrying those you can find bits of wood chip left over from your splitting or from your your felling and you could take pieces like that but they're okay they're not great i mean the the perfect for throwing for the dog but in terms of splitting apart like that, they're not the best. You can take any pointy object. I mean, this is the remains of that post I made earlier on in the video. This is the bit I chopped off at the end because it had that weird hook bit on it, but I didn't like it. So that would work and you could use that, but I'm gonna give that to the dog too. So instead, you, I'm going for something like this. These are hardwood wedges. These are made from a piece of seasoned ash. So they're a bit harder than this, but not much. These are pieces made from two year seasoned beech, and they're probably going to be a much better choice. They're small, they're quite lightweight, but they're a harder wood than the ash, so they're unlikely to be deformed and just bury themselves in the ash wood. They'll probably force a way through the fibers and split it apart. You don't even have to actively craft them and make them. You can just take bits that break off when you're making the, the other wedges and you've got little free wedges like that that would work equally well. So I'm going to use some of these three here and then try and fight the dog off before he runs off with the rest.
So that's it, it's just wedges and physics like everything else in this video series. So thank you for watching. I could go into more techniques and there's, there's loads more we could deal with here and we could get into some really fancy complicated techniques, but I think we'll save those for another video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for watching this far into the video. I know not everybody makes it this far. If you like what we do, then please like the video, subscribe to the channel and maybe have a look at some of our other videos. We've got some gear reviews. We've got some other tutorials. We've got some videos from trips. Have a look at originaloutdoors.co.uk and see what we're doing there with our courses and a few other things. And whatever you're gonna do next with your life, thank you for watching, thank you for supporting us, and I'll see you again next time. Come back here with a hammer.